about customer dinner at, uh, at RSA, and um, we really appreciate you all being here, but in particular, we appreciate uh, Mark Andreessen spending some time with us. Thank you so much, Mark. So what I'd like to do is make this kind of open Q&A. We're going to start out with a few questions from me, and then we would, would really appreciate questions from the audience as well. So Mark, um, Andreessen Horowitz invests in a, in a range of different security companies. What are your thoughts of the security market today? You know, what are the hot areas? Yeah, so um, good news, bad news. Um, the good news is uh, security is the full employment act for venture capitalists. Um, and so one of the reasons why this conference has gotten so big up here. Um, you know, the bad news is security is a problem, obviously, is intensifying enormously. Um, our basic theory, or my basic theory on security right now, kind of macro theory, um, you know, I started developing software when I was 10, you know, at, uh, back in like 1981. Um, and if you remember the level of panic that people had back then that, you know, Matthew Broderick was going to break into NORAD um, and trigger a thermonuclear war. Um, and so, you know, computer security panic has existed for a long time. And that was maybe the defining movie kind of of that era, which is it was kids and hackers, you know, kind of having fun or, or being malicious. Um, I like to think of the second era of computer security was kind of the 1990s into the 2000s, which is maybe best exemplified by Goodfellas. Um, not that they were hackers, but that a lot of hackers of the 90s and 2000s, had you met them in person, would have reminded you uh, of Ray Liotta um, in that movie. Um, criminals, you know, people running scams, um, you know, the, the sort of rise of, you know, uh, uh, criminal gangs uh, uh, operating, but, you know, a lot of financially oriented uh, hackers. Um, in the last 10 years, no surprise to anybody here, um, it's probably the movie Enemy of the State that's kind of most representative of what we're going through now, which is pervasive threats, uh, pervasive threats from governments, nation states, uh, both friendly and, and uh, potentially hostile, um, pervasive threats from criminals, per, per, uh, from activists, uh, from a very broad uh, cross-section of actors. Um, and on the one hand, you can kind of look at that and you can say the world's becoming a dark place um, and you know, this is all getting much more serious and, and we're all headed in a bad direction. Um, I think there's, 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 there's a positive aspect of it though, which is it reflects how important computers and the internet and information um, have actually become. I mean, there's a reason why all this stuff is now such a target and why people are willing to put so much effort into, into penetrating today's systems is because so much of business and so much of real life is now being lived online. Um, and so I think there's a very natural symmetry between how important all these systems actually are to people um, and to companies and, and then the level of attack that they get. Um, but that does guarantee that in the world that we live in for the next 30 years, we're just gonna see steadily, steadily intensifying attacks. Um, you know, for a variety of reasons, the industry and customers have not been prepared for the current level of attack uh, and the growing level of attack. And so there's sort of an up-leveling that has to take place. Um, and I think we're in the middle of that right now. And I think it's a really fundamentally transformative time uh, for security as a result. Okay. So CypherCloud is invited to a number of different breedings every week at your offices. Tremendous opportunities for us to meet with new companies and you know, basically educate them with respect to the you know, the direction of technology and what new technologies are out there. When you're talking to customers coming through your offices, what are you hearing with respect to what their biggest challenges are with respect to protecting or securing their data? The biggest challenge I think customers have um, is they've spent the last 20 or 30 years buying security products and then they're sitting here with a massive security problem. Um, and so the question gets asked, you know, what, what are we spending all this money on? Um, you know, one, one could even, you know, there are, even, there, there are companies in the security industry that sell a very large amount of security software or hardware and apparently ultimately protect nothing, as far as anybody can tell. Um, uh, and so there's a very fundamental level of dissatisfaction with the status quo. Um, and you see it every day, and you see it in Home Depot and Sony and Target, and it's just, it's very easy to kind of see, see the case studies of this. Um, so I think there's this, it's this kind of step function upgrade that has to happen. Um, so much of what has to happen is this realization that I'm, I'm sure a lot of you are, are having now and, and, and are working your way through, which is perimeter security, perimeter security does not cut it. Um, in fact, perimeter security, you know, perimeter security is important. Perimeter security may have a big downside though, which is it makes you feel more secure than you actually are. Um, because so many organizations that thought that they had security uh, through firewalls have discovered that they've been thoroughly penetrated anyway. Um, and so the single biggest thing we hear from, we hear from customers we talk to is, um, the assumption, the new assumption has to be the penetration has occurred. Uh, the new assumption has to be that there's, you know, organized criminal or nation state activity. There's identity spoofing, there's phishing, there's all these things that are happening that are resulting in actual penetration. Um, and despite the fact that the system's been penetrated, the firewall's been breached, um, despite that fact, there is still security. And so there's security at the user level, authentication level, um, and there's security at the information level. 
Um, and so, you know, basic, very basic questions. Um, most information in most enterprises is still not encrypted. Um, it's time to encrypt all the information. Um, you know, most authentication for most computer systems in the world is still not two-factor. It's time to make everything two-factor. Um, and so on and so forth through all the different kinds of security. Um, and it's time to do that. And these are, you know, as you guys know, these are very substantial upgrades. These are very substantial implementation efforts. Uh, but it's time to take on the really serious challenges. So what do you think the importance of cloud security is? You know, what are companies not thinking about with respect to information going into the cloud? Yeah, so, you know, there was sort of a, you know, you guys all know, there was sort of a thing five or ten years ago, kind of cloud was, in fact, kind of easy to dismiss for security reasons because everybody knew that their enterprise was secure um, and then everybody knew the cloud may or may not be secure, but because we know the enterprise is secure, why take the risk? Um, you know, more often, typically not larger groups, but in small one-on-one -on -one meetings, people will generally concede, no, no, we now know the enterprise has been thoroughly penetrated. Uh, we now know it turns out that our environment is very porous and we're not happy about it, but that just is the way it is. Um, now, that doesn't relax the burden on cloud providers to take security seriously, but it does put, you know, kind of things in perspective that just because something's behind an enterprise firewall does not mean it's more secure than a, than a cloud. And in fact, one would, you know, presume, hope, assume, or hopefully justify that companies like Amazon and Google and Salesforce that are kind of first-class cloud companies, um, you know, ought to be able to do a very good job at security and, in fact, a better job than a lot of enterprises uh, should be able to do. Again, Burdens on the cloud companies to prove that, but at least in theory, they should. You know, Google should be able to do a good job securing securing your email. You know, better than better than you know you can do it yourself, or better than we could do it ourselves. Um, so there's kind of a more of a balance. There's more of kind of a I think an objective kind of understanding of the pros and cons. Um, so that's good. Um, but I think another huge thing has happened in the last five years, which is there's the enterprise view of cloud and the IT view of cloud, and then there's the user level reality of cloud which is it kind of doesn't matter to a certain extent what the CIO thinks in terms of how many employees should be using which cloud applications. One of the characteristics of cloud applications is they're very easily adopted from the bottoms up. Um, and so, again, no surprise to you all, but like, you know, the sheer number of people inside any organization today um, that are using Dropbox or using Evernote or are using, you know, Gmail or are using any of these things, um, you know, is just gigantic. Um, and, you know, sometimes people actually go try to figure out uh, what that is and they try to get people to tell them the truth and then people lie. Um, we have another company that has great software for being able to tell what's actually running on people's devices and it always turns out there's a lot more Dropbox than people thought. Um, so there's, there's that component of it. And then there's the unanticipated consequence of attempts to lock down cloud usage, right, which is, you know, or, or, or attempts to get people to go into a secure system. So my favorite example of unanticipated consequences is, um, you know, the, uh, the FBI, you know, had this very secure uh, thing, the virtual case file system for, uh, uh, mainframe-based communication that was, you know, very secure against all kinds of intelligence, you know, potential intelligence penetrations. Um, you know, it was a very locked down system. It just had a couple of problems. For example, it turned out that you couldn't attach an image to an email um, uh, just because the system was old. Uh, very secure, very old. Um, and so it turned out several years ago, it came out in the press, it turns out all the agents had gotten themselves Hotmail accounts um, and were emailing around photos of suspected terrorists. Um, which is ironic because Hotmail, of course, is the same service the terrorists themselves use. And so it's kind of the centralized terrorist uh, information network. Um, and so, of course, or, or even like, you know, our own Secretary of State most recently, you know, Hillary Clinton decided, you know, that it would be a good idea for her to run her own server in her basement in Chappaqua. Um, and when asked um, why she felt like that would be a safe and secure thing to do, she said it's very secure. Um, it's being protected by Secret Service agents on the grounds. <laughs> Nobody's quite explained to her yet the whole idea that the hacking attacks actually happen coming in over 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 the network. Um, and so I think there has to be, and a lot of a lot of CIOs have this now. There has to be an understanding that there is going to be user behavior. That user behavior is not totally controllable, um, and in fact, attempts to control that user behavior may result in even worse outcomes. Therefore, what do we know? We know whether we either decide we approve of it or not. Users are going to use a lot of cloud applications. If they are going to use a lot of cloud applications, then they do de facto become part of the IT footprint of the company. They do become something that we have a responsibility to secure. Um, and then if that's the case, and this gets to why we invest, invested in Cypher Cloud in the first place, um, if we know that's the case, then we need a comprehensive way to secure the cloud. Um, and we need to do that in a way that you know, works with the big cloud providers who maybe do good security, but we also need a way to do that with all the other cloud applications. And you know, there's a new one every week. It's Slack one week and it's Asano the next week and it's Quip the next week and whatever. And all of these companies have very well-meaning young engineers building all these things, but like not everybody has Google levels of security. Um, and so there needs, we, we always believe there needs to exist something like Cypher Cloud that's able to comprehensively solve cloud security. 
Um, and you know, I think people are in the process of kind of thinking this through and working this out, but you know, trends are very positive. That's great. So what, just kind of a counterintuitive question. How would you respond to somebody who says, you know, the cloud's pretty risky out there. You know, I'm a federal agency, I'm a large enterprise. You know, maybe I should, just shouldn't adopt the cloud at all, even if there is cyber cloud. Yeah, so I think those arguments are almost over. Um, with the customers we deal with, we've seen a really big sort of change. Even even the last two years, we've seen a big change of that. I mean, there are still some organizations that, that, that are going to be on that on that page, but we've seen a very, very big change. I think my answer to that would be in two parts, one of which is the world is moving, um, and the new applications and the new capabilities are going to be cloud-oriented, um, and your users are going to end up using them whether you know they are or not, um, and so you might as well get in front of it. Um, and then the other is, again, this realization that your own enterprise is probably not nearly as secure as you think it is. I guess I would say in this day and age, the correlation from, of CIOs who believe that it's a bad idea to use the cloud to CIOs who are in denial about how penetrated their own organization is is, is probably pretty close to one to one. Um, and so, you know, that conversation can get a little uncomfortable. Um, but it is, it is often the case that the environments are much more penetrated than people think. And so I think it's not just a question of cloud or not cloud. It's a question of a broader theory of security and systems in this world, you know, which is not the world that we used to live in. Okay. And one last question uh, before I turn it over to the audience. Uh, you know, the security market is going through huge transformations very, very quickly. The velocity of change in securities is increasing dramatically. Just, just compared to RSA last year, um, where do you see the market one to two years from now? Yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> it's going to grow a lot. Um, so <laughs> So the VC in me always gets excited at this question. Um, the solutions, the solutions have to get a, the solutions are in the process of getting a lot more serious, and they have to get a lot more serious. I think. I think the vendors have to get a lot more serious. I mean, all the security companies we work with now operate, I think, at a higher bar of technical sophistication to be able to get into market than they used to. Um, the cloud providers have to upgrade their own security capabilities in real time. The customers have to upgrade uh, very quickly their own approaches to security. And so it feels like, you know, it, it is serious. It is already serious. It feels like. Security is taken much more seriously today than it was five or ten years ago. Five or ten years from now, it will be taken again, kind of new orders of magnitude more seriously. And again, the, the dark side view of that is this is an unsolvable problem and like it's just this treadmill that we're all on and it's all going to be terrible. The good news version of that is we are building in the internet and with mobile phones and with cloud applications and with all the software and all these applications and databases, um, we are building the future of how businesses operate and we're building the future of how society is going to run and how people are going to communicate and how people are going to access information. And it's a wonderful world that we're creating in terms of everybody with a smartphone in their hand able to access you know, the sum total of human knowledge um, anytime they want. I mean, it, it's an amazing thing that's happening around the world. 300 million people a year are going on the internet right now. Um, and so you know, to live in that world, um, I think it's worth um, dealing with these issues. I think it's worth trying to solve these issues. It's worth putting a lot of work into it. Um, and that's what we're going to all be doing.